no matter what happens. <laughs> I know, something's different, right? What is it? What could it be? Well, I, I decided that change only happens by choice. And so I chose to see what I look like again without facial hair. Watching a video of myself when lockdown first started and I still didn't have the beard. And I remember looking so much younger and I was like, wow, I'm about to turn. Well, as my brother Tyrone said, I'm going to level 41 now. And so as I'm about to go to level 41 next month, I figured I want to see what I look like without trying to make myself look older. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the new look. I hope it didn't throw you off too much. And I, I just want to say thank you for being here and joining us again today. And if you're a first timer, as always, we want to remind you, please, please kindly, kindly let us know. We've got a gift for you. We want to connect with you. I'd love to speak to you directly. And if you want to talk to me, I'm open for that. That's something I'm looking for. And if you're someone who's already been part of their feast, if you're a faithful follower of this feast, let us know what we can pray for. If you need to talk or if you need us in any way, let us know. We'd love to connect. We'd love to be able to be there for you. Send us a message or put a comment in, this, in the comment section and let us know how we can connect. It's so important. It is our community and let us be a family, a faith family together. So let's get into the talk and let's remind ourselves what we talked about and the feast for the, all of North America. And so in continuation of that, what we're going to try to do is make sure that each of our talks for what we're supporting through the Feast Network will be something that we can set forth and be onto one unified message that we can all be ready for this each week by week as one faith family. And so today, it's my chance to share with you talk number two, Anawim. And let's just reflect before we dive into Anawim what we talked about last time. And what we talked about was who are God's VIPs, right? And we also talked about God's measuring stick, which is a much better measuring stick. And so before we jump in, let's read that Bible verse one more time from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Today I'd like to preach on a message. No matter what happens. And let us pray. Lord, because of your spirit that gives me perseverance, I can declare that no matter what happens, through good times and bad times, when the sun is up or when the rain goes down, when I have zero problems or when I have a lot of problems, I will still follow you all the days of my life because you are with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, I wanna warn you today this is probably going to be one of the most difficult talks you'll ever hear. You're gonna learn very deep, very difficult, and very dangerous stuff. After the talk, you'll know what I mean. So I encourage you, I encourage you to lean in. Say this out loud. I love the word. And when you love and you sacrifice for it, and the more you sacrifice, the more you love it. Amen. I want to reflect on a story of mine. If you know me, then you'll know my wife, Kelly. And 
I believe I'm so blessed. I believe we're blessed to have each other. Me, of course, I believe I got the better part of the deal, but I believe we're blessed to be with each other. And I love my wife so much. No matter what happens, I want to work through it all. And in the beginning of our relationship, we met in the Philippines. And when we met in the Philippines, it was a whirlwind romance. We were married within a year of meeting each other. And mind you, the first three years of our relationship, we spent more time apart, separated by the Pacific Ocean with me living in Los Angeles and her living in, the, in Manila. And we spent more time apart than we did together. In fact, the whole first year of marriage, we spent most of it, I believe about 75% of that year, me here in Los Angeles and her in the Philippines. And through those times, even through the first year of us being together and wondering, do we make this commitment? Do we take the step so that we can be together? And I had to be here in America. I had to stay. And you know, it was tough. It was hard. Many times I tried to convince myself, is it worth it? I'm sure she did too. And it is. The things you work the hardest for, you don't want to let go of. No matter what happens. And that's love. Love sacrifices. And that's what I want you to do today. I want you to love the word so much, no matter how difficult it is to understand that this sacred text, you'll do it. You'll hear it, you'll dwell on it, and you'll make it a part of what you do. You'll take action on it. See, the last feast at home for North America, we covered the first beatitude. We spent the whole first one on one beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And we learned how to use God's measuring stick because the world's measuring stick will say the people who were following Jesus, they were the losers. Right? They had a big L. But what did we do with that measuring stick? God's measuring stick told us they are the VIPs. And we turned loser into love. Amen? Losers became love. They are the loved. They are the VIPs. And now let's dive into the eight more to go. And we're going to have to go fast. And I apologize not for not being able to give equal attention to all of them. But I need to hit, get this message out. Amen. Let's start. Blessed are those who mourn. For they will be comforted. This is, this is a message directly to Jesus' audience. And his audience were the Anawim, right? Pronounced Anawim. And the Anawim mean the poor of the Lord. And you can look this up. Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, right? Wrote about this. He wrote about the Anawim. And when he, we studied the Anawim, Jesus Christ to his audience is making a connection to what his, the, his audience had studied, what they had known, their history. And he was making a connection to the Jewish exiles, right? So he's speaking to the Anawim, the poor, the losers who are now loved, who are now understanding they are the VIPs, but he's making a connection of them to the Jewish exiles returning from Babylon that were conquered by Persia. But maybe you're like me and, you know, if I tell you this story based on Persia and how, you know, they were now returning because of all that historical stuff that had happened, maybe you won't hear this message as much. So I think I want to share a message that rings today. How about an on a whim today? And right now there's so many things happening, right? The poor of the Lord right now. We have... COVID-19 that came, those who are being, who are sick, who are getting this sickness, this virus, who have been affected by this virus. How about the Black Lives Matter movement right now? Injustice to a social demographic, and we can see it all around the world. We have colorism. Are we judging people by the color and shade of their skin? How about right now, those who are unemployed, who are losing employment, 
who are fearful of how they can provide for their family? How about for those who are homeless right now? As homelessness increases, as unemployment increases to record levels in our country, how about them? See, in our modern day Gilded Age, we see so many who are mourning. And yes, we are still in it today, brothers and sisters. There are still people who are sick. There are still people who are protesting. There are people who are losing their jobs right now or have lost their jobs and are still unemployed. And there are many, many, many who are homeless right now. And yes, we are in the rain today. Nay, I'd like to say we are in a flood. But as it was taught to me, brothers and sisters, it is better to be in the ark than it is to be outside during the flood. And I know, I know that it's easy to love the sunshine and forget we need the rain. And I know when there is rain, the sun will come again. Amen. And like Jesus said, we do not know the day or the hour. And we really don't. We don't know when the sun will shine again off out of this COVID-19 or when our turmoils will end. What we do know is you are the blessed. You are part of the upside down kingdom. You are God's VIP. And the blesser is with you. And if the blesser is with you, you have everything. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. What is the meek? Well, two things I've learned. Number one, are those who don't think they're important. And number two, who others don't think are important. And that's truly who Jesus is speaking to the second group. There's, he's speaking to the people who others don't think are important. They shall inherit the earth. And what do we mean by the earth? Well, like in our prayer, when thy kingdom comes, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And it's easy to think about this as people who are wanting to be holy. But really, it's about the right being done in the world. Justice. And even for myself, justice was hard to understand. What truly is justice? So I found this illustration shared with me from one of my friends. And her share really touched me by seeing something clearly illustrated about justice. And this illustration shares with you inequality, equity, equality, and justice. And to truly have inequality, equality, equity, and justice, or truly have justice, sorry, well, you have to understand what it is. So I like this illustration because it helped me understand by using one of my favorite books, The Giving Tree. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mercy is not pity. Mercy is not that kawawa term in Filipino, right? Mercy is action. Mercy is doing something to take away a part of the suffering. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God how do you have a pure heart I guess the obvious choices would be you could go on a mountaintop and pray for the next seven days and read the word for seven days or you can listen to these preachers who are just amazing heart-wrenching preachers that stir you to repentance or you could pray on your knees for three hours on the hardest floors and Pray and pray and pray. Or maybe you just need to wash your chest with Clorox. <laughs> All of these are great answers, except maybe the last one. Um, but I don't believe they are the most effective ways to purify your heart. Here is one. God says through the prophet Isaiah, I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. And brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, trials will purify your heart 
like nothing else. And trials will force you to choose who you follow. You know how I know. Because of test. Our own test. And I'm so blessed to have the wife I have. And the family I have. But when we were having Alex. I was in the room. And Kelly lost a lot of blood. So much blood it was on my shoes. And I threw away those shoes. And I was very scared we were going to lose her. I saw the panic in the doctor's face. I saw the nurses rushing to inject Kelly with things to stop the blood from flow from flowing out of her. It was a very scary event to me. And then after that, Kelly had an ectopic pregnancy that we didn't realize was happening. And as I carried her into the emergency room, and thankfully we saved her, and then they removed half of her reproductive organs and then told us they can't remove the other half unless we want to pay for the cosmetic surgery. And then we were placed with the decision that the doctor told us it is safer for your wife to have an IUD in her because this, may ha this might happen again. And during that time, many years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, maybe more, when this happened, I wasn't following God as faithfully as I am now, if I was following God at all. And I was scared to lose my wife. And as I was scared, I said, go ahead, let's do this, honey. Let's protect you. Let's make sure you're safe. So for many years, we had this contraception inside of her that kept us from having another baby. And we went on with our life. And as I came to the light of Jesus and it showed me and talked to me about God and following God, and I watched one of my own brothers have six children and truthfully follow God, loving God so faithfully, I had to reflect on my own life. I had to listen to what God was saying to me. And I had to talk to my wife and have a conversation telling her, I'm not telling you what to do about your body, but I'm letting you know what I'm being, I'm hearing. I want you to know what's going on in my head and my heart. And early this year, we decided to remove the contraception placed in her and just have faith in God. Brothers and sisters, I'll be 41 this year, next month. And I finally understand to have faith. And I thank the Lord. But truly, trials will make you choose who you follow. We are being told we must go through tests. Every level we've ever wanted to get to, we had to take a test to get to that next level, to the next uh, grade level, to the next license, to the next ability to perform at this job and that duty. There was a test. And truthfully, I love the analogy that I heard from another preacher that shared the word test. And tests came from silversmiths who would heat up the metal so hot that the impurities either burned up or rose to the top and they would remove the impurities and the maker would look at the metal and if the maker could see his reflection, then his creation was pure. Your test will help you reflect your maker. Your test will burn off the parts that are not of God. Your test will make you pure if you choose to follow. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And at the time of Jesus, there was a lot of religious power groups who hated each other. What else is new? And to name a few of them, one is the Essenes, two, the Zealots, three, the Sadducees, and four, the Pharisees. And hey, groups are great. We need them. In Genesis, God said, it's not good for man to live alone. But here's the problem with that. When your group becomes the center of your life, no longer God, that's when division happens. And see, that on a whim, they didn't take sides because they didn't have any power to maintain. They had no ego to fight for. They had no agenda to push. That's why they stood in the middle. 
And when you go through severe trials, you'll realize all divisions are petty. Amen? Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let's think about the Anawim who followed Jesus. All their life they suffered poverty, sickness, rejection, you name it, they suffered it. And then one day they decided to follow Jesus. Do you know what happens? More suffering. They get insulted, persecuted, rejected more. Why? Because of the main message of our talk today. See, there are two kinds of followers in this world. The good, if things happen kind of person. If God will give me this, then I will follow the Lord. God, you give me the lottery. If you make my life happen, if you make this happen, God, if you give me this job, if you take me out of this trouble, Lord, if you do this, We've got a deal. I will be your follower. Brothers and sisters, God is not here to make you happy. He is here to make you holy. And that requires testing. See, we call these people the fair weather followers. They're only there when it's sunshine. See, the second kind, brothers and sisters, you know this. The second kind is the one I said from the beginning, that no matter what happens, followers. See, this is the on a whim. The VIPs in God's kingdom, those that re realize they are able, they have it because God gave it to them. This is the attitude of the on a whim. This is Jesus' attitude. Jesus is the embodiment of the Beatitudes. He was born poor in spirit, just giving himself wholly to, the, to our Lord, our God, our Father. He was born in a stable for animals. He was raised in the poor area. He mourns for all of God's people. He is meek. He is merciful. He is pure of heart. He is a peacemaker. And he brought peace between God and man. He was persecuted and he died on a dirty cross and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Jesus is the Anawim. And just like the Anawim, in due time, he received his victory, our victory, the victory. The tomb didn't have the last word, brothers and sisters. Jesus rose from the dead. And brothers and sisters, yes, you, the one who's watching right now, I see you. I'm talking to you. I know you're having a tough time. I know you're praying for Corona to go away. We all are. I know you're asking for help. I know you are going through a season of rain. I hear and I feel your pain. You are blessed. I know maybe it doesn't make sense to you. It's tough to make sense of what you don't understand just yet. But you haven't finished the test. You need to go through it. Don't stop. Keep on going through your test. Take what you have learned and apply it today. And this test, you know what? It's open book. You can open the book. It's open book test. Isn't that amazing? And this test, it has a cheat sheet inside. Here, look, I have cheat sheets. And what Brother Pio said is codigos. I have them in mind. Do you have yours? This too shall pass. And I'd like to ask you to choose how you will pass this test. Most important, brothers and sisters, be a no matter what happens follower. Say it with me if you believe it. 
Say it out loud right now. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, I will follow the Lord. Believe it. This, I believe it.